and welcome to Repeat the Question. I'm David Sackreiter, and this is your one-stop shop for everything related to the world of the movie trivia showdown. Frankie the Animal Alvarez was not the focus of his debut win. Between a controversial ruling in favor of I Am Robot and the collapse of Brother Lomas in round three, the Animal's win kind of flew under the radar early in the season. This time around, however, there is nothing to distract from a gutsy win by the usual suspect's rookie. Welcome back to another edition of the Repeat the Question match recap. Of course, we're talking about Frankie the Animal Alvarez taking on Jessica the Sleeper Schloth. And at the end of round one, this was a tight match, just like it would be throughout the rest of the game. Alvarez opened to a 7-6 to six lead, but that would quickly dissipate in the wheel round. He elected to defer to a his opponent to kick off round two and slow spun the category of 2010s to put up a modest six points off a of four or five performance in the category. Fortunately, she also gave up a one point steal to her opponent, but that wouldn't seem to matter as Alvarez stepped up to the plate and spun the category of Jody Foster. Wasn't quite able to fare as well. He put up a middling five points in the round and also gave a one point steal right back to the Den rookie to tie the game at 13 apiece. From here, the pair were pretty much identical. In round three, they both hit their two and their three-point questions, but missed their five-pointer to send the game to sudden death. And in sudden death, it would take three questions, but eventually Alvarez would pull ahead and and remain standing to win 20 to 19. Alvarez puts up a 78.9% accuracy rate, a 66.7% PPE, and he moves to 2-0 following the win. Before we get into discussing Alvarez's performance in this match, just a little bit on both competitors, um, marketed improvement, I think, for both Alvarez and Schloth following this match uh, compared to their debut matches. And if both continue on you know, this kind of path, they may not be challenging for the title this season, but I definitely think they might be challenging for one early in the season next year, especially with some work in the offseason. Um, you know, that was kind of what we were talking about with Marisol McKee last season. Showed a lot of promise, but wasn't quite there to win the title um, early in the season. And then, of course, um, she was in the tournament. So one loss means you're done for the year at that point anyway. But she came back this season and really elevated her game to the next level. And now she's in a number one contender match with the probably the favorite to be challenging for the title following that match at collision. So I think that's what we could see from maybe both of, um, if not either one of uh, both Frankie Alvarez and Jessica Schloth. I I think they're both improving. Um, They both have a good feel for the game, which I think is really important. And and that is something that um, we see a lot of rookies have now, especially because they have managers to rely on, um, that was true uh, a few weeks ago when we're talking about Chris Van Fleet versus Doug Benson. Still true um, even through two matches with both Alvarez and Schloth. So, you know, marketed improvement, that's all you can ask for as they keep continuing to get better. Obviously, got to hit the five point questions to win at the elite level. So, that's going to be the next thing for both of them. And speaking of next things, Alvarez advances to take on Rick the Rager Radis. It's not officially scheduled, but that seems to be what's next on the docket. And he's ready for it, as we'll hear right now. Listen, uh, this ain't the first time I've seen an internet weirdo try to come for me. Uh, I showed the world what would happen when Brother Lomas came up against me. And I mean, look at me now. And uh, Rager, you better hope, you better hope and pray that you start living that lifestyle, bud. Because I've been a rager way before you were even a thought, okay? So it, you better be prepared. You better be ready. And if you're going to talk that talk, you better walk that walk, boy, because I'm coming full force at you. And I'm hungry. He is hungry. <laughs> and there you have it. Alvarez is definitely fired up to take on the rager. He already took out Brother Lomas of the exchange early in the season. Now he wants the rager. And got to say, I'm I'm excited for that matchup. It's too um, you know, very charismatic personalities that I'm excited to see face off. I think the, the trivia level is about even there too. So it should make for an exciting match. Here's the other interesting thing. If we're talking about players to go three and O because one of the two of them will be three and O 
following the win there. That puts them in some pretty elite cat company. Um, as as I'm going to list out some competitors here, we're talking Dan Merle, Clark Wolf, Rachel Cushing, Ethan Irwin, Paul Oyama, Liz Shannon Miller, Adam Collins, and Kevin Smith are all players, the only players, as far as I can remember, who have gone 3-0 and in the singles division. That is about as a, a lead of company as you can get. Um, I did leave off to Mark Riley, of course, and Josh McCuga went 3-0 and as well, um, but that was in season one, and you know, the rules of the game were just a, a little bit different. They weren't quite as defined as they would be in, in season three on. Um, but, you know, just just for clarity's sake, they did go three as three and zero as well. And even as you add those names to the list, it's it's some pretty elite company that that you're talking about that we're all will also include um, Frankie Alvarez or Rick the Rager Radis. Some might say that they don't necessarily deserve it, especially because, um, you know, what what will that mean? But at the same time, it is interesting to note that usually three wins um, gets you to a number one contender match and gets you close to a a title shot. I don't think that either Alvarez or Radis will see a title shot before the end of the season. They might see some something early next season. But it seems to me like all of the rookies this season are just playing for better tournament seeding at the moment, just based on the way that um, title shots are kind of shaking out through the rest of the season. You know, that's kind of a bummer because we're not going to see, you know, an Alvarez or a Radis challenge for a number one contender match, most likely. It also means we're likely not to see a Griffin Newman or somebody of that ilk challenge for a number one contender match or a title shot um, late in the season. And I think that's unfortunate because it's likely going to mean barring a tournament run, which is, you know, we saw Adam Collins do it, but it's very, very unlikely. Um, We're not going to see another rookie come in in their first year in the league and, and win a championship. And I think that's kind of unfortunate, but you know, when you've got this many players in the league that need to get matches and, and as you're kind of foraging, ways to the title. It just doesn't look like they're going to get their shot this season, barring, um, you know, kind of an unlikely tournament run, which of course is possible. That brings us to our look at the faction standings. The usual suspects come away with the win here. They climb out of last place. They're two points out of the bottom following the win. This match was a big one for them. Obviously, every match is going to be big for them as they continue to need wins to work their way out of the bottom. Um, you know, Sam Levine's squad is is faced with a choice here. They, you either pack it up and go home and, and shoot for the number one pick or you say, we're going to do everything in our power um, to go as high as we can. And in order to do that second half, they're going to need wins out of Alvarez and, and and Amaru Moses. Amaru Moses is going to have to win against Moose Haas this week. And then on top of that, he's going to have to beat Saul at collision to challenge for the title. That's a lot to ask, but the truth is the usual suspects, and I think any faction, needs at least two title contenders in order to stay in the mix as far as the faction championship is concerned. I mean, you see what what two title contenders can do for a team like the Quirky Mercs, which really has I think they have the second worst record in the league at 7 and 10 and uh for by all accounts shouldn't be as high in the rankings as they are, but they they're getting wins out of Shazam and Andrew the Hunter Dimalanta and that's what's propelling them into fourth. And so if the usual suspects want to play that same game, they've got to get Moses to a title shot and they need a win from Ethan Irwin on Friday over Ben Bateman to send him to a title shot. Both of them are able to win, win a title. They're right back in this thing. And then as we look at towards the den, talked about the den last week with Stahl's win, you know, it's unfortunate they get a lo- loss out of Sloth here because 
wins from her would have been beneficial just towards keeping them afloat, but they're kind of right around the middle of the pack, and in order to break out, they're going to need somebody to win a title. And it looks like Thomas Harper's going to be the one to do it, but they need... They, it, when it comes down to it, the name of the game this season is title shots. If you can win championships, you're going to win the faction championship, and if you can't win championships... You're out of luck it is is really just how, how it seems to be working. It's much, much different than last season where you could just kind of stay afloat with a bunch of uh, mid card type players. This season, you really need those elite elite players to challenge for the title and the usual suspects. Maybe they've got something kind of hiding in both Amaru Moses and, and Frankie Alvarez. It's it's tough to say what exactly their potential is, but you know, Ethan Irwin or Liz Shannon Miller or the Godfather Drew McWeeny, they're not going to be able to kind of anchor this faction by themselves. They're going to need some more help down roster. And fortunately, they're able to get the win here today. So Alvarez wins 20 to 19 in sudden death. That's going to do it for the show today. Be sure to support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash RTQ podcast. You get exclusive Q&As, early access to all our non-news content, and of course, a look behind the scenes at the process here at Repeat the Question, patreon.com slash RTQ podcast. It's the only way we're able to keep the show afloat. If you want to listen to the show, we are available on all podcasts and platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, you name it, we're there thanks to Anchor. If you're not a big fan of, of listening, you'd prefer to have a visual component, we are available on YouTube, youtube.com slash David Sackwriter. You're only getting about half the show on audio. If you tune in on YouTube, you get all the access to the graphics and all the little extra things that I put into the show, so be sure to tune in there. In addition, we also have every single element of repeat the question is available on rtqpodcast.com if you don't like to watch you don't like to listen you can of course always read every single piece about the showdown that i produce will also have an article format as well you want to stay up to date on all of those things be sure to follow us on twitter and instagram at rtq podcast that's the best way to track what's going on with Repeat the Question. You can follow me on Twitter at POTUS107. But that's going to do it for the show today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in, and so long.